بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بنرحب فيكم في محاضرة رقم 11 في الاوبتمايزيشن تكنيكس اليوم رح نتكلم برضو عن طريقة ثالثة من طرق الاتراتيف الالغوريثمز فور اوبتمايزيشن طريقة هاي نسميها احنا ليفنبرغ ماركارد الالغوريثم اوكي سو اتس دي The main topic who will iterative algorithms for optimization. And the technique that we are going to discuss is the Levenberg. Markard algorithm. Usually we say it's the LM algorithm, Levenberg Markard. Okay, the Levenberg Markard it's a variation of Newton's method, so it is a variation. of Newton's method. Okay. It is also it's very well suited and who are for problems where the performance index index f of x is mean squared error. Okay, and you do a variation in Newton's method. مناسب كتير لما بيكون عندي performance index معادلة تربيعية mean squared error. Okay, so we'll take let's see the basic algorithm. Okay, recall. Recall the form of Newton's method where the performance index is the sum of squares we know that in for Newton's method let's put it again x of k plus 1 this is the next iteration is equal to x of the old iteration minus a sub k inverse g sub k where x a sub k is the Hessian matrix at x equals xk and g sub k vector is the gradient vector the gradient of f of x at x equals x sub k okay okay so this is the Newton's method, and it works perfect for the, uh, as we mentioned before, it works perfect for the square, the function, the performance index when it is a square function. But the problem is that you have to find the Hessian, and the Hessian is the second derivative with respect to the 
parameters and it's really uh, needs so much iteration uh, uh, I mean steps for calculations and storage it needs storage and calculations okay now if we assume that f of x is a sum of squares as we mentioned sum of squares function then we can write it as f of x is equal to summation of v sub i squared of x from i equals 1 to n and this is equals to v of x transpose as a vector times v of x okay so v of sub i you can put it as v transpose times v so you have the square of each element in the vector v okay then the jth element then the jth element of the gradient would be so if this is f of x it's a sum of squares of items which are the errors, it could be the errors between the, the output and the, I mean the actual output and the uh, target output, so, or the desired output. So this is, these are supposedly to be the errors, the sum of squares of errors. We can put them in vector transpose times the same vector. The jth element of the gradient based on this square function can be written as the, the gradient of f of x and this is the jth element the jth element of the gradient is equal to the derivative of f of x partial x sub j and if you take x sub j inside here you can say that this is the second 2 times vi multiplied by vi with respect to the second to the uh, jth uh, parameter. So this is equals to 2 summation v sub i partial vi of x vector partial x subject from i equals 1 up to n so this is the jth element of the gradient so the gradient here has elements inside the jth one is equal to uh, v sub i partial ij okay we can put this in in a vector form Let's see how can, if we expand this for all the parameters inside, for all xj's, then the gradient, then the gradient can be written In matrix form as the gradient of f of x is equal to 2 times j transpose of x 
times v v of x, where j of x is equal to a matrix that has partial v1 of x, partial x1, partial v1 of x, partial x2, until partial v1 of x, partial x sub n, and here partial v2 of x, partial x1 again, partial v2 of x, partial x2, until partial v2 of x, partial xn. And this will be go until partial v sub capital N of x, partial vx1, partial v sub N of x, partial x2, until partial v sub n of x partial x sub n. You can see that the matrix here is n times n. You have v1, v2 up to vn. Those are the number of rows. And you have parameter columns x1, x2 up to x small n. So the size of this matrix is n by n. Those are the number of errors that you have in the vector, the size of this vector. And n is the number of parameters within f, within your x vector. <coughs> okay. J of x has a special name. J of x is called the Jacobian matrix. So J of x is called is the Jacobian matrix. Okay. So so we have this is the formula for the gradient. Okay. Now we are going to look for a formula for the for the Hessian in terms of this V, which is could be the error vector or any vector that we need to square it. Okay, next we want to define the Hessian matrix. V K J element of the Hessian matrix would be square, del square of f of x, k and j. So this is the k comma j, jth element of the Hessian. It's the second derivative of f of x with respect to xk partial xj. So this is the definition of this element. The second derivative with respect to the first parameter and then to the second parameter. Okay, and this is equals to two times the summation from i equals one up to n. And inside the summation we have two items. The first item is the partial vi of x partial xk times partial vi of x partial 
xj plus inside here. So this is also inside the summation, the vi of x times the second derivative of vi of x with respect to xk with respect to xj. Okay. So this is the summation of those two items. And if you go back to the definition of the Jacobian, uh, you can find the derivative here is the, the, uh, this, the derivative of the first one times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first, okay? So the first one has, was vi times the derivative, so we dif differentiate it. Then we leave vi as it is and we differentiate this derivative twice, once with respect to j, the second with respect to, to k, okay? Okay, so this is what we have as an element, so we can expand this for the whole matrix then the Hessian the Hessian matrix can be expressed in matrix form. The Hessian matrix can be expressed in matrix form. As the gradient squared of f of x is equal to twice times j transpose times j. So the first element is j transpose times j, j transpose of x times j of x. So plus 2 times the summation. This one here is, we will call it 2s of x. So what is s of x? s of x is vi times the del squared of vi, okay, where s of x is equal to the summation of vi of x times the del squared of vi of x from i equals 1 to n. So this is a very important result here. The gradient, or sorry, the Hessian matrix is the twice the Jacobian transpose times the Jacobian. Now this term here, as we move further, and if we are giving V is the error, and the error is very small, then S of X can be neglected if we uh, assume that S of X is very small. So if, we assume that S of X is small, so it will be neglected, then we can approximate the Hessian matrix as So we can approximate the Hessian matrix to be del squared of f of x is approximately equal two times j transpose of x times j of x. So here we don't need the Jacobian, they are all first derivative with respect to the parameters. So the Jacobian transpose times the Jacobian give us an approximate value of the Hessian, so you don't have to go for the second derivatives. Okay, so if we substitute so if we substitute this result or this approximation 
So if we substitute this approximation, we obtain the Gauss-Newton method. So the Gauss-Newton method says that x of k plus 1 as a vector equals the old, the old guess or the old, the new solution is equal to the old solution minus 2 times j transpose of x, j transpose, j transpose of x, j of x, sorry, inverse times 2, which is the, the gradient j transpose of x times v of x at xk. Okay? So the new prediction or the new iteration, x at the new iteration, x, or x at the old iteration times this one. Notice that here it's 2 and this one 2 will be cancelled because this one is inverse. So you have the inverse here, 2, it's 1 over 2 with this 2, so this 2 will cancel with this 2 and you will have x of k plus 1 equals to x at k minus j transpose of x at k j of x at k inverse j transpose of x at k times v of x at k where v is the vector of errors or the function without the square <coughs> so here is what we call the gauss the gauss Newton method. This is our the Gauss Newton method. It is this one. Notice here that you don't have to calculate the Hessian anymore, so it depends only on the first derivative of the uh, error function. So we have no need to calculate. So we don't have to calculate the second derivatives. Okay. okay, the second comment here is that one, one problem of the Gaussian, no, the Gauss-Newton method is this inverse here. This inverse could be, uh, could be uh, not invertible. So one problem with the Gauss-Newton method one problem with the Gauss-Newton method is that the matrix H which is equal to J transpose J this matrix may not be invertible. It may not be invertible. Okay. Okay. So the solution here is to to try to overcome this problem by adding some element to the matrix so that it will be positive, definite, and inverted. Okay, so this can be this can be overcome 
by using the following modification. to approximate the Hirschian. We will assume G equals to H plus some mu times I. So this is our H, J transpose J. So H J transpose J plus some mu times I. I is the identity matrix of the same size as, as H, okay? So to see how this matrix can be made, Invertible. Suppose that the eigenvalues of H, sorry, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. of H are eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda sub n. It's the number of parameters in H. And the eigenvectors are Z1, Z2, up to Z sub n, respectively. Okay, then using this, we know that G times ZI equals to H. So I'm going to substitute what is, I'm going to multiply one of those eigenvectors times G and look at it inside. So H plus mu sub I, mu I, sorry, H plus mu I times ZI. This definitely equals to, if we distribute this H times ZI plus mu times ZI. I'm gonna, I times ZI is ZI. Okay, mu times ZI. Now, H times ZI, we know that if Z1, Z2, and ZI is an eigenvector eigenvector of H in ZI, H times ZI is equal to lambda I times ZI plus mu ZI. If we take this to be lambda I plus mu times ZI, then we can conclude here that for this, for this G, it has, notice that now you have G times ZI. The matrix times its eigenvector equals to the eigenvalue times the same eigenvector. This is the, what we know about the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Eigenvectors and eigenvalues says that any matrix has an eigenvector. So the matrix times an eigenvector is equal to scalar quantity, which is the eigenvalue that corresponds to this eigenvector multiplied by the eigenvector itself. Okay. Then what we have concluded here, or what we have got from this last equation is that the, the G matrix has the same eigenvectors as H, but with the modified eigenvalues. So the eigenvectors vectors 
of G are the same as the eigenvectors of H. And its eigenvalues are lambda i plus plus v, which is very helpful for us. Okay, how then g can be made. And G can be made positive definite it can be made positive definite by increasing mu until all or lambda i plus mu is greater than zero for all all i so if all the values of the eigenvalues of g are positive then you have a positive definite matrix and the matrix will be invertible and therefore The matrix will be invertible. Okay. All right. So this is the modification of our G G tra J transpose J. The so this important result here. This leads to the Levenberg Markar algorithm. And x at k plus 1 here is equal to x at k plus or sorry minus j transpose of x at k j transpose sorry j of x at k plus mu sub k times i the whole thing inverse sorry inverse multiplied by g at x j transpose at x k times v at x k okay or in terms of the delta we can put this in terms of the delta so the delta will be the negative delta of xk, which is equal to x of k plus 1 minus x of k is equal minus the j transpose of xk, j at xk, sorry, plus uki. plus mu sub k times i, the whole thing inverse, j transpose at x sub k v at, at x sub k, okay? This v is a vector. j is also a vector, okay? Okay, so this is the 
Levenberg Marquardt algorithm. Notice here that we put mu sub k because mu sub k will be also, it will be changed in, with every iteration. We'll see how can we do this. Let's do some comments on this mu. As mu sub k increases, the algorithm The algorithm approaches steep the steepest descent the steepest descent algorithm with small step size. Okay, or learning rate. Uh, here you have x of k plus 1 equals or almost equal x of k minus 1 over mu k j transpose of x at k times v of x at k, which is equal to x at k minus 1 over 2 mu sub k the gradient yeah. we have this formula before the gradient was equal to 2j transpose vx so we take this so it's mu of x the gradient divided by 2 what we meant here, as mu k increases, if mu k increases, then this one is dominant and this one will be neglected. So if you neglect this one, and this, the inverse of this one is 1 over mu k times g transpose k times v. So as mu k increases, it will be dominant inside this term, the square brackets, and j transpose v times j is neglected with respect to mu k times the identity matrix. This is why we have this one to be approximated by this formula. Okay. So this is for large mu sub k. While as mu k decreases to zero, the algorithm becomes Gauss-Newton. So you will move between the steepest descent and the Gauss-Newton method. Okay. Now, how we do we implement this levenberg marquardt algorithm? We will play with this mu parameter. So the mu parameter is, is very crucial here. It's very important. So usually, usually the algorithm begins with with mu k set to some small value. For example, mu k equals 0 0.01. If step does not so if you do one iteration and you don't have the smaller value for f of x does not yield smaller 
value for f of x. So you don't have an improvement. If you apply mu of k and you don't have an improvement, then the step is repeated with uh, mu k multiplied by some factor. Okay. So if this is true, then the step is repeated with mu k multiplied by some factor beta greater than 1 usually beta equals 10. So you multiply this mu by 10, which means that you increase the, the step size, so you are approaching the steepest descent. Eventually, f of x will decrease since we would be taking small step size in the direction of the steepest descent small step size in the direction of steepest descent. As we mentioned here, so you increase mu k once, twice, three times, every time you multiply by 10 until you have a very, st very small step size in the direction of the steepest descent, which is the negative of the gradient. Okay, on the other hand, if a step, if a step produces a smaller value, so f of x will, be, will decrease for, for f of x, then mu of k is divided by beta for the next step so that the algorithm will approach Gauss-Newton. Which would provide faster convergence. Which would provide faster convergence. So the, <laughs> let's uh, just, uh, you know, put things in, in order. We did the steepest descent. We came to the Newton's method. We tried to modify it, so we end up with something called the Gauss-Newton method that used the Jacobian, Jacobian transpose. Then we had a problem with the positive definiteness of this matrix. So it could have, it. maybe we have a problem with the inverse. So we add this parameter here and adding this parameter here gave us the Levenberg-Marquardt algorithm. Uh, 
now this uh, algorithm, the Levenberg Marquardt algorithm, goes between the Gauss Newton method and the steepest descent with a very small step size. Once you start, so this is our main uh, procedure that we are going to take. We will start our algorithm with a very, not a very, with a small uh, value of mu k. Put it here. Do the algorithm. If you have, if you don't yield a smaller value of f of x, then you fix this f of x and you go to the next iteration by changing the new of new k by multiplying it by certain beta. And usually we take beta equals to 10. So if it's 0.01, so it will be 0.1. Do the procedure again. Find the inverse. If you find x of k, delta x of k, find the next iteration or the next parameters, apply it for f of x. If it's OK, then it's good. If not, then we multiply it again until we have f of x decreases with a very small step size since we mu of k will be very large here. So you have the steepest descent with a very small step size. Okay. If the step produces a smaller value of f of x, then we have to reduce mu. So we'll reduce mu and make this one to be dominant. So if mu is very small, mu i is equal to zero, almost zero, this one will be the dominant and we end up with the Gauss-Newton method that will, go, will converge faster, especially when you are very close to the minimum. If you are very close to the minimum, then you can approximate the function by a second order and the Gauss-Newton method goes to the minimum in one, in one step. Okay, with this, I would like to thank you for being with me. Next lecture, I will uh, try to find a, a good example that we can go through with you so that we can implement the Levelberg Markard algorithm together. Okay, thank you for being with me and I will see you in next lecture. Thanks.